Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Klein, and thank you for uh, joining us at DigiCert today uh, to talk about uh, Project Matter, uh, digital trust, and uh, home device connectivity and automation. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, two of my teammates, uh, Darren and Andrew and Tim Hollabeek, who are going to uh, uh, provide uh, additional uh, insights, uh, both uh, technical and compliance if needed. Uh, glad to answer your questions and, and, and help along the way. So uh, thanks for joining us and, uh, and we hope you uh, enjoy the next uh, 30 minutes to hour. Um, so I, have, uh, I am actually in San Diego today uh, at uh, the conference and uh, enjoying uh, a little bit of San Diego weather, but the Matter Conference is actually going on right now. Uh, and it's an opportunity for uh, all of the participants uh, that are going to bring Matter to market over the next uh, coming months and years uh, to get together and make sure that, uh, that what they're doing is, uh, is appropriate and of great value to, uh, to both uh, manufacturers uh, as well as to uh, uh, the end consumers who uh, are enjoying a boom in uh, connectivity and automation inside of their homes. Um, I'm the Senior Director of IoT Business uh, here at uh, DigiCert. Uh, Darren is one of our lead program um, and product managers. Uh, and uh, Tim is uh, uh, part of our compliance and audit capability. So across the board, I hope we have the correct uh, insights and can answer the questions that are important to you today. So let's, uh, if you don't mind, uh, for a second, I'll talk a little bit about DigiCert. Um, so we have uh, been in existence for, for a while. We work in the area of uh, PKI certificates and security. Uh, we are one of the leading providers of uh, TLS security in the world. Uh, we actually uh, secure about 28 billion transactions every day uh, and have learned a lot along the way. Uh, and part of that is our investment in, in digital trust, not only from the standpoint of technology, but how we've worked with um, standards and compliance bodies over the last number of years, the things that are audited inside of the work that we do that allows us to uh, provide a, a very high level of assurance. Uh, it has allowed us to, uh, to, to form some relationships of one which we're going to uh, talk here uh, over the next little bit. Um, we are a global operations company, so uh, across multiple continents, sales offices and languages, we're there. Uh, really proud of our, our world-class support that's 24-7, uh, again, uh, uh, follow the sun. Uh, and we do a lot of research. Uh, Darren's very heavily involved uh, in uh, the continuous investments that we do, uh, both in product and uh, technologies that we help bring to market. So with that said, um, we really do deal with a number of different bodies and uh, connect a lot of different things. Uh, NINA is the 911 initiative that's going on across North America right now and something that we're heavily involved in. Um, Matter, which we're gonna speak about today, which from the CSA, uh, is something where we've been involved since the uh, uh, standards alliance, uh, since the uh, uh, days when it was Zigbee, and a number of the other open systems that go there. Um, currently today, uh, there's about 3 billion devices worldwide that we help to secure, uh, more every day, and uh, pretty excited about uh, the adoption and the technology in those areas. So the problem, why, why Project Matter and why are we doing this? Um, it, was, it has been pretty evident that across the manufacturers, there have been a lot of great initiatives, whether you're a fan of Google, uh, Apple, or Amazon, uh, they've changed the way that you interact with uh, each other, with your homes, with uh, your music, your content, just across the board. And a number of manufacturers have also been very aggressive in trying to bring to market the very best uh, connectivity for their devices, and, and they've done some great work. But there really was not a blueprint for uh, interoperability between the manufacturers. Uh, there was a lack of, of consistent security standards. Everybody always tries to do their best, uh, but really a lack of, of consistency. And, and with the world we live in today, we know how important that is. Uh, and there's a lot of competing manufacturers. So uh, there was this challenge that there's lots of devices, lots of great opportunities to bring things together, uh, especially in home automation. Uh, but really, there wasn't a, a, a single solution for, for all of that. So um, the CSA has been long sponsored in uh, trying to make these con connectivity standards come to life. Uh, 
a number of the leaders and CSA reached out to each other uh, to talk about what can we do to make sure that if you have a garage door opener or a thermostat or a, a security camera or whatever you may want to connect through your home, uh, that if you say, hey Siri or Alexa, everything works together out of the box. And it has a reason why all of the pieces come together. And they've consolidated that under the name matter and the logo that you see at the bottom of the screen. And this is coming to market in the very near future where if you go to Best Buy or Amazon or whichever is your, your favorite uh, place to, to get electronics, um, if you see that matter logo, it is going to be able to provide uh, a reasonably high standard of connectivity and security between the devices and the, and the functions that you would like to provide, have them provide inside of your home. So I look at it like this. Um, if you would have about 12 to 15 years ago went to Best Buy and bought a mouse for your computer, you came home with a box that had a mouse on it, in it, and you also came home with probably a diskette and you downloaded the diskette. Same thing so that you could get the driver on your device so it would work with Windows. And you'd have a different diskette if it was gonna be a different operating system. And then you went to the printer and the printer download list and which style of printer. And all of that was for Windows at the time. Everyone was developing towards it because it was prop, uh, pro, uh, prominent in the market. Um, nothing worked together. And what did they come up with? Plug and play. So plug and play is really very similar to what Matter is doing. It's creating an environment whereby if you see the plug and play logo, you know that that device is going to work within this ecosystem of technology and going to seamlessly come together and do the things that you need to do. Think about Matter in the same way. Matter is trying to bring together a standard by which uh, a lock, a thermostat, lighting systems, ring camera systems, Simply Safe. ADT, go down the list of items that integrate inside of your home. And all of these are things that should work together. Um, there are uh, 250 and growing uh, number of participants that are uh, working right now uh, in this. Uh, I'm at this conference and it's very interesting to see the commitment that everyone uh, has to making this a success, including DigiCert. And so uh, we're continuing to, to help in this, in this um, uh, arena. Um, where we come in in this arena is in the security layer. Uh, for all of these devices to work together, they want to be ha have a, a form of uh, uh, security between them that is non-reputable. And for that, we use digital certificates that come from uh, a PKI backbone, but all of these uh, work together in a, a way in which there's seamless integration inside of the platforms and inside of the things that go on. So that's why I'm here. That's where matters at right now. Um, we believe and the vendors believe uh, that uh, there is going to be product in the shelf on, on, in the fourth quarter that's going to have that matter logo on it. I think that a discerning consumer is going to say, hey, I want my stuff to work together. I want it to work seamlessly. I want to buy the matter brand. So it's important to the manufacturers and to a number of other folks uh, that want to serve the consumers in the best way possible uh, to go ahead and do that. Uh, my last slide. Um, just a little bit about the timeline. This has been going on for a while and these technical specifications have been coming forward. Um, we're here in San Diego as a, as a collection of organizations to continue on those standards. And we, DigiCert, have a specific interest in and have helped work on the standard for uh, security across the devices. Um, the manufacturers are now getting ready to uh, uh, finish their application development, insert security into those devices and get those things to market. Uh, and in doing that, um, they're using uh, some of the products that uh, DigiCert uh, is bringing forward. Um, while they can do it on their own, and there's an option to do that, um, DigiCert is the only third-party certificate authority vendor that is actually participating uh, with um, uh, the Matter uh, group uh, and the CSA on this particular project. Uh, we do that by using uh, our uh, history of what we've done and securing uh, connections on the internet and the tools that allow uh, organizations to adopt our technology. And to that extent, I would like to introduce Darren Andrew. Uh, Darren is our uh, a product manager and product lead 
uh, for IoT and the things that we're doing there. Uh, so I'm going to turn this over to Darren, and he's going to talk in a little bit more detail about how DigiCert approaches the problem. Darren? Great. Thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, I'm going to go into, like Tom said, uh, how DigiCert is leveraging our expertise in PKI to help um, help those who are adopting or aligning with the matter uh, specification be able to meet the requirements within that specification regarding the certificates. So the, the, the PKI and certificates that are used as part of that specification. First off, let's talk about the hierarchy, how the hierarchy in, uh, in the CSA matter specification has been um, designed. At the, at the top of a, a, a PKI hierarchy for the matter specification is something called a matter, uh, well, it's a product attestation authority or a PAA. And the PAA is a root. So uh, in, in PKI, we talk about a root CA and the importance of establishing trust through a root. And these PAAs, the product attestation authorities, there would be multiple, multiple product attestation authorities in a, um, in a trust store and matter is using a ledger to distribute those, those routes that have been approved routes. Uh, so there'll be um, a, a, a group of those approved routes that, that matter has accepted into their trust, uh, their trust framework. DigiCert um, uh, is, is participating in this and we uh, will be submitting a, cert, a, a PAA into that, that trusted root store. And um, it's an offline root CA. So on, on the DigiCert side, we keep that protected in the ways that we keep roots protected. We have a history of being able to protect roots and ensure that they are that they are um, uh, managed and operated in a, uh, in a secure way. So that's the expertise DigiCert's bringing into this is our whole history of being able to protect roots and operate these uh, trust frame, the PKI for trust frameworks in a secure and efficient way. So that's the first step of a hierarchy is the root. And, they, and it's called a product attestation authority by the matter um, certificate policy. The next step uh, after having a root, the, the PAA is that root, is uh, that you'd sign intermediates. Now, one thing to note is there are, um, this, there's a concept of a shared PAA that signs intermediates for multiple vendors. And if it's a shared PAA, which DigiCert is submitting, a, is going to be submitting a shared PAA, what that means is that the vendor ID, it would not be uh, present in that PAA, in the product attestation authority. The next level down of the, of the hierarchy is the PAI or the product attestation intermediate. And a vendor ID is required in the product attestation intermediate. And product attestation intermediates then are for specific vendors. Um, so what DigiCert would do uh, for that, that uh, member, that vendor member uh, of, of the matter um, project, we would verify that they are a member of the CSA um, for, for matter. And we would make sure that their product ID matches their organization name. And then we would um, issue a product attestation intermediate uh, to that vendor. And uh, that would be signed by our PAA that's already present in the trust store, the, in the matter trust store. So immediately what that does for the vendor is it allows them to uh, immediately have trust in their, uh, their certificates and their chain um, so that they don't have to go through the process and the, the, take the time away from their implementation 
to go through the process of submitting a PAA themselves. Uh, so that can shorten the time frame for, for going to production. So that's a good thing. The other thing it does is overall for the trust framework, limiting the number of PAAs to a manageable number uh, uh, of roots in that trust store will help overall for this matter project to be successful. Um, ultimately, in order to identify whether a device attestation certificate should be trusted, you're going to have to build that chain back to the root. And the more roots that you have in the trust store, that means you're, you're checking back to a larger pool of roots to check for um, whether or not the device attestation certificate is, is a valid certificate chaining to a trusted route. Um, so we're, we're helping in two ways there. One is the time to, time to production. So a PAI is issued from a, a route that's already trusted that DigiCert's already submitted. And then also shrinking or keeping the number of, of uh, PAAs down to a manageable number of um, uh, for that trust store. Uh, one other major benefit that a, a vendor receives from using DigiCert's PAA is that we are responsible for the audit requirements for that route uh, and making sure that uh, we're, we're demonstrating to, to CSA that we are, we are operating that route in a compliant matter or in a compliant manner. Um, and that's done through audits. So we'd have external audits that we, we uh, go through each year to prove that we are following the proper uh, practices that align with the, uh, the matter policy. The third item on this list of the hierarchy is the actual device attestation certificates. Device attestation certificates would contain both the vendor ID that matches the PAI, and it would contain a product ID for products that are um, matter, um, matter certified or that are aligned with the matter specification. So that you'd have, you'd see in the device attestation certificate, both a product ID and a vendor ID uh, in those certificates. And DigiCert has, um, has uh, services to, um, uh, to issue those uh, de device attestation certificates. So then let's get into that portion of things. So we've talked a lot, you know, so far we've talked about DigiCert's ability to host and, and ensure that we're operating the uh, PAA according to the matter specification, according to the matter policy. We've talked about how we'll sign PAIs from that uh, PAA. Uh, let's talk about our services for uh, providing those device attestation certificates, or in other words, for provisioning device attestation certificates to devices. Our DigiCert platform for certificate uh, lifecycle management has been designed, we have a, a portion of our platform specifically designed for IoT use cases. And the, the design that, that we've um, adopted with this, with this platform from the start, from the very beginning was um, geared towards how manufacturers uh, can uh, manage their certificates, the, the life cycle of their certificates for their devices. So from the very start, the whole the, the starting structure within this platform is that we wanted for the manufacturer to be able to manage their certificates with their device in mind, with, with the idea that I'm uh, ultimately I'm, I'm creating a product, I'm creating a device. And so we wanted the view, that you have within this platform to be similar to the, the concern you have or the, or the focus that you have, which is in your product. And so that's why we have a device record as, as kind of um, one of those base structures within our product. And with a device record, you can view 
which devices have received their device attestation certificate. And you can track, uh, optionally track metadata about the devices so that as you issue certificates for, for a device or a device attestation certificate is issued for that device, you can uh, track bits of information about maybe where it was manufactured or when um, or what product uh, it's, it was manufactured for, or maybe firmware version of that, of that device that can go into the device record. The next, I, the next major component within our IoT um, certificate lifecycle management product is the variety of certificates that we support. Um, these are just examples of things that, that we have here, um, but the, one of the first things that you'd need to know is that the device attestation certificate uh, profile that's um, that's been published by the uh, by CSA, we support every bit of that profile. So there, there are particular things uh, uh, that um, the profile has, and two two main things that are the product ID and the vendor ID. Um, but what I wanted to, to relate though is that that's the profile for today. So matter has, uh, or sorry, CSA has. Um, determine that the certificate profile looks a certain way today. And we fully support that in this platform. But in the future, as we've seen in many other consortiums that we've uh, participated in, over time, those certificate profiles uh, change and other things need to be supported. For example, today in the matter uh, specification, it's a SHA-2 signature algorithm that's in these certificates. Um, but in the future, that may change to SHA-3, and we already support SHA-3. Um, in the future, there may be other custom extensions that are necessary for those certificate profiles, and we support custom extensions and certificates. So um, one of the things that you'd want to ask yourself as you're selecting a PKI uh, certificate lifecycle management product is, Will it support my future needs? And uh, in, in, in very high level confidence, this platform both supports current and future needs and it's improving over time. So um, that's one of the things we, we want our uh, customers to feel confident in, in the way we're supporting matter. The next thing to consider so we, we definitely have, you know, it's, we have that device record. You can see what certificates are issued to your, your devices. We have the uh, customization of certificate profiles. That's important to make sure that you're, you're able to issue the type of certificates you need today and, to, and, and in the future. The next part of this is the enrollment methods. Um, the platform would do no good if there, if there wasn't a way for you to obtain the certificates for your devices or provision certificates to your devices. The enrollment methods I have listed here are fairly common enrollment methods. So enrollment over secure transport, certificate management protocol v, uh, version two. We have SCEP, um, uh, support for SCEP and the matter project is not, um, it's not one of the things that you'd be able to use because SCEP does not support elliptic curve keys. Um, the, the platform does support SCEP uh, and we support ACME and we support uh, uh, enrollment through our REST APIs. In all of these as well, we have multiple options for you to authenticate into those, those protocols. Because another, supporting a protocol is only the first kind of step in knowing whether you can um, make requests to that protocol one of the other important things is the credential that you're using to make the request. Um, let me give an example. Let's say that you, you did want to use enrollment over secure transport, but the uh, device doesn't have a certificate yet. And so maybe the first step to enroll over um, EST would be for a one-time password to be delivered to the device and then it uses that once in, to obtain its first certificate. And then it wouldn't use that password again or could not use that password again. From then on, it would use the certificate that it's received 
to do any um, new, to have any new requests for certificates fulfilled, uh, maybe renewing the certificate or, um, or issuing a new type of certificate to that device. Um, so the, the authentication options, we have multiple settings for passwords that if you choose to use passwords for authentication, multiple settings for certificates, for using certificates to authenticate. Um, for example, you could, you could say any certificate issued from a certain issuer is concer considered a valid credential. Or you could say only this certificate is considered a valid credential. So we have a lot of different options for both password uh, configurations and certificate configurations. Now, the next kind of topic is the actual provisioning. So when you're de when in the whole life cycle of your device are, is the plan for provisioning a certificate to it. Um, I have three examples here. These are the major kind of examples um, of where devices are, are provisioned. Uh, um, sorry, wh where you provision these device attestation certificates to devices. Pre-assembly, uh, I'll get into more detail on each one of these, but pre-assembly is the idea that um, if, they're, if your devices are, are uh, using a chip or an MCU or secure, secure chip, or TPM, if they're using those, then there's, a, there's a, uh, an opportunity to possibly provision that device attestation certificate to that, uh, that chip before the chip is even sent to the manufacturing line to be assembled into the device. So this is we, uh, this stage we call pre-assembly. The, the overall, the overwhelmingly um, most common time where we see device attestation certificates provisioned to devices at the, is at manufacture. So the device is actually at the manufacturing line. It's being provisioned with its firmware. Um, at that moment, it could also be provisioned with the certificate. So a certificate could be delivered during the manufacturing process when the device is on the manufacturing line. There is another use case that we've been hearing about and we've been talking to um, uh, CSA members about, and that is devices that are already operational. So uh, maybe you already have uh, locks in the field for your home, your home locks or security cameras in the field or um, you know, different devices that are already in the field. And you're, you're wanting to update the firmware on that device and make it align with the matter specification. So this is a tricky one as far as operational devices that you want to update the firmware and then provision a device attestation certificate to the device. One thing that, we, that we've been counseling um, CSA members about this one is that we're talking about an overall trust framework. Um, the, the trust framework relies upon all the participants to operate within a um, uh, you know, a standard practice or, or good practices for security. And one idea that you know to consider if you're if you're thinking about provisioning certificates to the devices in the field is that would actually be an attack, uh, an attack vector um, for breaking into that kind of process and um, possibly receiving a device attestation certificate um, uh, to someone who was just interested in masquerading as a valid device. And so the process um, would have to be uh, vetted very well to know that it is a genuine device that is requesting for a, for a device attestation certificate to be provisioned to it. Um, and that whole process needs to be well protected so that we don't end up in a situation where device attestation certificates are being provisioned to uh, non-genuine devices that could then masquerade as genuine devices. So that's, that's um, 
we, we don't want counterfeit devices uh, to be introduced into the uh, into the whole trust framework. And that needs to be uh, considered as you're considering provisioning device attestation certificates to devices in the field. All right, let's get into more detail on each one of these. First, let's talk about the certificates issued to um, or provisioned at pre-assembly. Digicert has a um, uh, has worked with Aero Electronics. They're a distributor of um, electronics, and and one of the things that they fit into this, the way they fit into this, is that they are a distributor of chips and and secure MCUs and TPMs. So you could um, a vendor could order a set of chips from Aero Electronics. And their, the PAI, the vendor PAI, could be held within uh, a device, a, a programming device on the Aero Electronics, within the Aero Electronics Secure Network. And that PAI is held on an HSM. It's protected there. And as uh, chips are pulled off of a reel, so I've seen this device in action. It's pretty cool. Uh, chips are pulled off of a reel, they're put on a socket, and they're programmed with maybe your firmware. And as well as the firmware, you'd also be, they'd also be um, programmed with a certificate. So your device attestation certificate could be programmed to the chip um, right then uh, before, before you, you're even shipping the chip to manufacturing. Um, they're, they're programmed on that socket and then they're taken from that socket and put back onto another reel um, and you know, packaged up and shipped to your manufacturing facility. Um, the information about those device attestation certificates are then uploaded to your IoT device manager account. So you'd, you'd be able to uh, have all of the information about the chips, uh, sorry, the certificates that have been issued to those chips those would appear in your Digicert IoT Device Manager account, and you'd be able to run reports on what uh, certificates have been issued to, to the chips. Um, and then of course, at manufacturing, in the manufacturing line, the chips that are uh, already containing device attestation certificates, they're just assembled into the product. Okay, so what, what's the beauty of this? Um, you don't change your manufacturing processes. Is uh, if you already use secure chips or your design calls for using secure chips, you you need to obtain the chips anyway. And so one option is to obtain those from Aero Electronics and have them pre-provisioned with a certificate, and then you don't have to change your manufacturing process. Those are just assembled into the product already with the device attestation certificate. So you're not dealing with the issuance of the certificate within your manufacturing line process. All right. The next, um, the next provisioning design here would be that you have, um, cons uh, you, you, you're considering whether you'd have your PAI this is kind of determining where is your PAA, what, where is your product attestation intermediate going to be held? And one option about where it's held could be on-prem. So within your manufacturing line, you could deploy IoT Device Manager. And as, de as device attestation certificates are needed on the manufacturing line, um, you could uh, call out to that on-prem service and request for a certificate to be issued. In most manufacturing processes, what we've seen, what I've seen, is that there's some kind of a program PC or programmer PC that uh, is speaking with the device with, uh, as it's being manufactured. There's a stage in the manufacturing process where maybe you're writing the firmware to the device and um, you could call for that device to generate a, a, a key pair and then take a CSR from that process, the programming PC could know how to talk to that on-prem instance of Digicert 1, call for the issuance of a certificate and provide that certificate back to the device. The matter of certificate policy doesn't specify that the 
key pair must be generated on the device. Um, I use that as an example, but you could generate the key pair in the program PC. You could generate the, P key, the key pair in DigiCert 1 because we, uh, we in, in IoT Device Manager, there's an option to call for the certificate and the key and the private key to be generated and, and provided back. So there are multiple options for how that, that key pair is generated. Maybe uh, your embedded device is just kind of low powered, doesn't have the processing power or the, um, the ability, capability of creating uh, good entropy for generating your private key or your key pair. So maybe you do have to generate a key pair elsewhere, somewhere outside of the device. Um, so this is just a note, the Matter CP certificate policy does allow for those private keys to be generated uh, outside of the device and then delivered to the device. Once again, this is, this is a process that we can work with you on. We could, we could help you uh, determine um, you know, what's needed for that key pair generation. We could work with you on determining how you're going to protect those key pairs if they're generated outside of the device. And we also have solutions for protecting the key pair on the device um, and you know, talking to that secure chip to generate the key pair, or if they're not using a secure chip on the device, it could be that we could help with some uh, software for um, securing that key pair, uh, even if you're not using a secure chip. Um, so hardware is the best way to secure those, those keys. But in the case where you don't have hardware, I'll talk a little later about an option for protecting those keys um, in software. So this is the on-prem on -prem option for uh, provisioning devices to the device attestation certificate to your device. And this is another uh, kind of hybrid, hybrid on-prem solution. Um, in this solution, the product attestation intermediate is held in the cloud. So it's not held on the manufacturing line. So you don't have to worry about exposing that product attestation intermediate on the manufacturing line. Um, it, it would be held in the cloud, but what would be held on, on the manufacturing line is a, a batch of certificates. So this, this process that we're describing in this diagram um, would be that the first step of the process is that a batch of private keys and, and, and public keys are generated and they're protected within IoT Device Manager on-prem. And the way that those would be protected is um, they're stored as a blob in the database and that blob is encrypted with an AES-256 key that uh, is held on an HSM. Uh, so that's the first step in this process is that key pairs are generated for a batch of certificates. And then a batch request of, for, for certificates to be issued for the DAC type certificates to be issued are, is sent to the cloud. And then those certificates are, are issued and pulled back down to the on-prem instance. Uh, and they sit in wait on the on-prem instance of DigiCert 1 IoT Device Manager until they're needed. So this, um, if I back up and kind of take it at a, a higher level, what are, we, what are we doing here? We're just connecting periodically. So you have a periodic connection from time to time. You'd connect to the, IoT, the cloud IoT Device Manager to issue certificates and then those certificates are pulled down, they're sitting in wait on the local instance of IoT Device Manager, and they'll, they could maybe be there a, a month in advance. So maybe once a month or twice a month, you call out to the cloud instance of IoT Device Manager, pull down certificates, those certificates are protected, the private keys are protected and, and sitting waiting for devices to need them. And uh, as devices need them, the programming PC would call out to an, a local API endpoint and that would pull a certificate and a private key to provision to the device. 
All right, the next, the next item, the next kind of workflow that we've seen, um, and this kind of gets into the on-prem, sorry, the, the device in the field. So device in the field kind of uh, workflow is what we're describing here. So we've, we've talked about how some vendors uh, already have devices in the field, and those devices know how to talk to a vendor cloud service. So the, the vendor may have a support service that they offer to, uh, to their customers and a cloud service where you could track devices that have been um, kind of provisioned into that cloud. You could track, um, you, you can update firmware on those devices through the vendor cloud service. So this is a device that's, um, that's manageable through a vendor cloud service. And at some point, in the future, um, what would happen is a, uh, a new firmware version would be provisioned to the device and it would have um, support for the matter specification. And at that moment, they also would need a device attestation certificate to be provisioned to the device. And what we see, the way we've seen this hap um, uh, be designed, we've been working with some vendors that are designing this into their, their, um, their update service is that, that that vendor cloud service would uh, um, call out to the DigiCert IoT Device Manager API and request certificates as needed for when their devices need that device attestation certificate. Um, and in that way, the, the, the protection um, to making requests of the PAI to issue certificates, that is protected within that cloud service. The cloud service would have a credential to make uh, requests for certificates uh, from that cloud service, from the, from the IoT device manager service in the cloud. Um, so, but like I said, this one, there's a lot of kind of, a uh, lot to consider with this one about protecting that process and making sure that you, you do know that you're working with a genuine device. Um, and one thing to note is that you're building upon something, some kind of way that you know that the device is genuine to provision a, kind of a pretty, you know, a higher level of assurance um, uh, identity to that device, because we're talking about a certificate identity that you're provisioning to that device um, and that's and that's for that device to participate in the matter um, pro, um, project in, in the matter specification. So we need to consider as you're thinking about the, this as an option, you need to consider protecting that that provisioning step, the, the step where the device enrolls for a device attestation certificate. Now one more thing, to consider, and this uh, is um, less popular, but also an option. Um, if devices already have a device attestation certificate and they need to be updated. So maybe a device needs to receive a new device attestation certificate. Um, because it already possesses one, that device attestation certificate could be used to make a a request for a new certificate. So like I had said, possibly in the future, we could see a, a requirement change, like a, a very real need to update to a new signature hash algorithm. We've seen that in the past. And that's, that's why we, we want vendors to consider the possibility of having to upgrade or update your certificate to a new, a new certificate uh, pro, uh, profile. Um, for example, when SHA-1 was deprecated, when there are issues with SHA-1, there was a rush to, to be able to update um, devices and services, update those certificates to a SHA-2 certificate type. Um, we, we, and so what we're, what we're counseling vendors to do or, or recommending is that you have a mechanism 
to update certificates in the future on your devices as technology changes. And so this is an option. Devices could directly connect to IoT Device Manager. They could use their existing certificate to authenticate and request for a new certificate to be provisioned to them, to, to the device. We've talked, you know, we, we kind of uh, assume a lot um, when we say let's let's adopt PKI. Let's let's just adopt PKI across the board for for home automation devices. And I want it, we want to um, let you know from a DigiCert standpoint, we've heard uh, about how difficult that is. We, we've seen, we've, we've been in the trenches with our customers as they are redesigning their devices to, um, to adopt PKI, to, to adopt the use of certificates for their devices. And we've heard so much of the pain. Um, and these are just some of the things that we've heard about the challenges uh, with adopting PKI on devices. So, you know, one of the main things, and I've already talked about this somewhat, those private keys, the private key of the device attestation certificate is, um, is how you know that, that it is a genuine device. So the private key, if it's compromised, um, allows for anyone to masquerade as that device. So you, you need to be able to protect the private keys. If there is some very simple way to programmatically just pull private keys off of, off of the vendor devices uh, and be able to masquerade as them within, within seconds, that would not be, um, that, that would be disastrous for that product to be able to simply pull the key and masquerade as the product, uh, as a genuine product. So, Protecting private keys, though, is easy to say, but uh, so in some cases more difficult to, to do. So implementing hardware protection, that's the recommendation. Um, but in cases where you already have a device that's in production and you don't have the, the capability of updating that hardware, then what do you do? So you know, protecting the private keys, um, but also implementing hardware protection means uh, redesigning the code for your device. How, how does your device talk to a secure chip now when it has, hasn't ever talked to a secure chip before? Uh, there are other challenges adopting a crypto, a, cryptograph, a crypto library. So things like OpenSSL could be a crypto library you use. There are others on the market, other crypto libraries on the market. Uh, but then the, the time and effort that you put into knowing whether you're, you're creating keys in a proper way, whether your, uh, your process for using the keys, so how do I uh, use the key for authentication? These are all things that take time for, for you to uh, be confident in knowing that you've implemented it properly. And then in general, coding. So the, the expertise in, in uh, secure code and creating code that is um, that participates in these uh, secure processes, that's a, um, those, those engineers are at a premium. Uh, and having those engineers on every one of your product teams is also difficult. Uh, and, and keeping those engineers staffed on your product teams is difficult. Um, and so what we've seen, we've seen this, this very large push, this push for, centralizing product security and adopting a repeatable, a repeatable process. So adopting maybe a software solution that can be repeated and, and de delivered to all of the devices in your product line has been one of the ways that we've seen um, companies more quickly adopt PKI. Um, so then what I'd like to present just quickly and we can, we can talk uh, more about this with you one-on-one -on -one as if you see this as a need for your product. DigiCert has a solution that can uh, streamline your process. It can uh, provide 
a, uh, a, a, a very, very small footprint um, software or agent for your uh, embedded devices. Um, and the, the two, the, there are really three pieces of this. There's a trust core piece. That's the, the SDK. It's the, it's, the, um, it's the crypto library. So the trust core has the crypto library. The trust core has um, all of the logic that ne is needed to talk to secure chips. It's all the logic that's needed to run on operating systems. Um, uh, and we've already developed this for running on operating systems, uh, all the major ones and a, a lot of the minor ones. Uh, so the trust core piece talks to the hardware. It's like, if you consider what happened in when Windows 2000 came out, and Tom was using examples of plug and play. I'll use an example of Windows 2000. Um, the hardware abstraction layer that came out. So you'd, uh, as a developer, you used to have to, to know how to talk to the video card directly, or you'd need to know how to talk to the sound card directly. But when a hardware abstraction layer came out, you could just, you could develop your applications to talk to the, the APIs that Microsoft gave you uh, to develop your software. So in this way, it's very similar. So DigiCert provides Trust Core. It has all the libraries and it knows how to talk to the operating systems. It knows how to talk to secure chips. And then you can develop your applications on top of it. And Trust Core could move, could be uh, installed on all of your product lines. And you, you just have to write your code to know how to talk to Trust Core. The next kind of building upon Trust Core is Trust Edge. Trust Edge has a lot of the kinds of security applications that you'd need to write yourself. Trust Edge has those already in a very small footprint to do things like firm, uh, sorry, firewalls, firmware updates in a secure way, provisioning certificates to the device, generating key pairs and, and uh, making requests for certificates uh, and monitoring, monitoring uh, processes that are running on your device. Those are all um, optional modules that the Trust Edge client brings to you. Um, so it could be as simple, if, if we look at these kind of steps here, could be as simple as the trusted agent is securely enrolls, uh, enrolls the device in the Trust Center. The device is provisioned a device attestation certificate at that moment. Um, and then over time, you could deliver uh, update packages to the device. Um, so if this is interesting to you, if you're if you're interested in this, then we'd be happy to to talk to you more about this. There's so much to this. I didn't want to spend an hour talking just about our Trust Core, Trust Edge, and Trust Center products. But if this is if this is something that you identify as one of your needs, then we'd be happy to go more in detail with with this. All right, at that, that's what we we wanted to present. And so we could, um, it looks like we may not have um, questions at this point, um, but if we do, if there are any questions from those who are attending, we could field them now. Yeah, so this is Tom again. Um, if there are any questions, you're welcome to put them uh, into the uh, chat window. Uh, and we would, would do that uh, or reach out to us and we would uh, love to work with you. There is a question here, is Trust Store commercially available today? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, when you say commercially available, it is commercially available through DigiCert. Uh, so if you would reach out to us and ask about that, uh, its application is actually much broader than just uh, the Matter Project. Uh, it does allow you to uh, get a very significant and granular control over your IoT devices. So, so thank you for asking that question. We'd, we'd love to uh, hear from you. Yeah, not only is it commercially available today, it's been available for many years, and um, many of the top um, the top companies are using Trust Core for their products. Um, so it, it has been uh, it has been. Uh, available and it is in use for for many years. Uh, it's been in use. Um, in DigiCert, 
uh, owns Trust Core at this point. Uh, so that is something that was a recent, kind of more of a recent development that it's a DigiCert product um, with our full, uh, you know, um, company backing behind it at this point and uh, working on um, full integration into our other products. Uh, so it's definitely something we'd, we'd want to um, talk more to you about if you have interest. Awesome. We've provided a lot of information today. Thank you for patiently uh, uh, sitting through and, and taking time to do this. Um, this is available. Uh, uh, additional information is available to you. If you reach out to either your DigiCert representative or reach out to us uh, on the website, uh, we'd love to engage with you. Uh, we're very thankful for the time that you spent with us today, uh, and we'd love to hear from you further. Uh, go out and have a, a great day, and thank you very much for all the time that you spent. Cheers.